the Lord Jesus came in his glory to save us. And when he was here, the crowd always followed Jesus. They followed him about from village to village, town to town. They followed him. The crowd is, is unique. You know, the character of the crowd is, is on its own. Why do I say that? Some people were following Jesus because of what they could get from him. Maybe food. Others followed him because of healing, deliverance, or many other things. You know, it's, things haven't changed. People follow Jesus for various reasons. You know, at one of those times that they were following Jesus, which we'll be looking at today, Jesus told the parable because people followed him whenever he said something or spoke to them about change, holiness, the crowd turned against him. Whenever he said something that they didn't like, but they wanted food, healing, deliverance, but whenever he said something about holiness, change, transformation, the crowd was not happy. Things haven't changed today. One of those times the Lord told his disciples a parable to illustrate what he was talking about, the complexity of the crowd and the fact that things haven't changed. A parable in itself is a simple story that is told to illustrate a, you know, a fact, a, a spiritual fact, or to pass on the knowledge, to make it clear to people. So Jesus told this parable about the good soil. We should pray and aim that our lives will be like that of a good soil so that we'll be fruitful and we'll glorify the Lord. You will see how the Lord shared various responses of people to the good news, the word of God. We should draw people to Christ, not let them come to us Gather the crowd. No, we are called to make disciples for Jesus, pointing to Jesus. Our key Bible passage that we're going to be looking at today is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 4 to 18. I read, While the crowd gathered, while a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded the crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others, I speak in parables, so that those seeing, they may not see. Though hearing, they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy, when they hear it, 
but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. This parable is very familiar. Jesus used it to teach, to teach his disciples, to show the responses of people to God's word, which includes definitely the gospel. It describes four types of people. And one thing you will notice, the four groups heard. They heard, the seed landed. The four groups heard, with the wayside, the stony ground, the one that fell among thongs, and the good soil, they all heard. But what happened, different things happened to them. As I want to unpack a little bit, what the Lord Jesus Christ said and what he was about to teach. I would like you to have two questions that you consider put in your heart as you go through. Do I belong to this group? If so, respond the right way. Which group does the person I'm reaching out to fall into? Whether in sharing the gospel or exhortation or counseling. Brothers and sisters, it's good to remind ourselves that we love people, but God is love. It's what he says is his definition of love that really goes. Some people have exonerated their families and they think the people that need Jesus are those other people. These ones are okay because they feel they love them. No. If anybody is not saved, he doesn't make heaven. I didn't write it. Okay? Some Christians say, oh, people pray too much. Well, you have to pray. When you look at yourself and look at your husband or your wife, look at your children, your family, then outside, you 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 should be a battery of prayers. Your, Your mouth should not stop. When the Bible says pray without ceasing, I think it comes into perspective. Apostle Paul said to some people, he said, I'm laboring again. I will continue to pray for you until Christ is formed in you. Okay? You see different things happening. Let's take the, the group, first group. Those that fell along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Don't you see? Don't you notice that, you know, some people keep hearing, they don't believe, and are not saved? What should you do? Or do you belong to this group? You pray. We'll come to that later on. You pray that they will be transformed. If it's you, say, Lord, I'm not saved. And if I'm not saved, I'm not going to heaven. That is the truth. Just sitting in front and worshiping, it occurred to me that in my lifetime, I've seen leaders changed. The United Kingdom, I I thought all over the world, I think a place where I've not seen a change. I don't know if I'm getting it wrong. It's Brunei. All of them. I knew the president that was before Putin. Think about it. They change. In Nigeria, they change. France, they everywhere. But our God is eternal. Our God is almighty. He lives forever. And, you know, you are the evidence. 
And we have a lot of evidence, but you can see the glory of God and what he's doing in your life. How can people hear in your watch and the devil will come and take the words away? Don't you see why you pray for people? Even before you bring them to meetings, you pray that, Lord, help me to hear your word and retain it. Let's jump straight ahead to the good heart. Four things. They heard, they retained, they persevered, and they brought up much fruit. That's the characteristic of the good soul. But this one's, it just heard, the devil just came. Hey, what, did you, what do you have there? Just pick it up. You pray that God will guide them. You pray not only for your family. If you are praying only for your family, you'll be like a fisherman that is fishing in shallow waters. You pray for others. While you are praying, God will look after your family too. You will pray for your family. We pray for people. The devil will come. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one giving the interpretation and take the word so that they will not be saved. That's a serious matter. It's deflecting. Deflecting the word. The word is the same in the four groups. The word. You know, King Solomon said it best in Proverbs 4.23. Say, above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Even, even the ones, the fourth group, guard your heart. That there is an enemy of the soul. He wants to steal. That's why Francis of Assisi, in, in his famous words, preach the gospel at all times. If possible, use words. Let your action. You may say, where I work, we are so busy. Or there are Muslims there, there are non-Christians. Yes. Have you not had the opportunity of people, or people, or the experience of people saying, how come you don't swear? How come you are so calm in the midst of problems? It's an opportunity to tell them who enables you to be calm, who has given you life, who has made you who you are. You introduce them. You are not the one. You are not the finished article. You are just like a jacket. Sorry, you are more than a jacket. Because we leave a jacket behind. We leave this body behind. Is it not so? Yeah. But when you introduce them to the one who lives forever, you are fruitful. Do I belong to this group? If so, respond the right way. We'll come to that in a short while. Second group, those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. So what should we do? This lack of retention will pray that they will have root. You can only have root that endures in Christ. You pray, you rededicate your life to God, surrender. We've been singing it this morning. Surrender to God. Take captive the thoughts, evil thoughts. Evil thoughts come to all hearts. You stop them. No. No, because that person upset you, you won't even mind if they, you know, something a little bit bad happens to them. No, 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 that's not from God. Leave them to God, bless them, pray for them. Take captive thoughts that are not right. If not, the devil will come and camp there. And it doesn't just camp. He expands. Run away from temptation. Seek help from disciples of Jesus. 
grow and read the Bible. Say, Lord, this is not all. Actually, let me give an example, an illustration, an example with myself. There was a time, you know, I loved reading magazines, listen, you know, listen to news. But when it came to reading the Bible, I would just be yawning. I wouldn't feel like, you know, reading. Read a few verses and put it down. Then one day I said, Lord, I'm your child. Christ died for me. I answered the question, yes. This Bible is your word. Yes. Whatever is not making me desire to read your word is not from you. Remove it from you, Lord. Deliver me. That year, I read the Bible cover to cover three times. You can pray for yourself for deliverance. You see it. You measure it. It doesn't add up. Say, Lord, because this is where we can change. By the way, if you want to read the Bible in one and a half months, 10 chapters a day, you will finish. You can start now and finish before January. And if you use a Bible that doesn't have uh, numbers, it's better. Because someone added the numbers. It was not written with numbers. It will just flow. Whatever the Lord says, and your life is not measuring, call out to God. You don't need to bring a crowd. Call out to God. After all, the Bible says, if you come to the Lord, if you draw near to the Lord, he will draw near to you. So anything, you know, you just have to draw near to the Lord. It's not happening for me. What is it? I know that if I don't have root, if I'm not growing, I'm dying. Help me, O oh Lord. The third group. The seed fell among thongs. Stands for those, this, sorry, the seed that fell among thongs. Stands for those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. This is a very dangerous group. Others are dangerous. But this one is very bad. It affects those who have been Christians for a long time. You, you know some people have been Christians before you were born. And you know they are doing some things that don't add up. What's happening? They grow with the weeds. They are growing. But they are growing with the weeds that will choke them. Because they are growing, they say, yes, they are okay. This can happen to pastor's children, those who think they know. Be careful. No free pass for anybody. We will come, we'll come to Apostle Paul's quotation in a little while. No free pass for anybody. Some people who think they know, beware. You grow with others. But you have to face life's problems. What are the problems? The same thing. You go to the market. There are pleasures. There's money, which is never enough. Some people get carried away. And some you know, worries. The Lord Jesus Christ said, in this world, there will be trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That is supposed to be for the disciples. I'm telling you this so that you will know. In this world, you will have trouble. You know, cast your cares upon me. But some people, they carry on. They cheat. How can you be a Christian follower of the light? And you are promoting darkness. How does it work? The devil was thrown out of heaven, the son of the morning, because of sin. How do you think you will get away with it? Growing up with the thorns. That is why you are complicit in it, because you have to say, Lord, help me. This is not what your word says. 
and your word says you don't show favoritism. That is why in the church we help one another. We don't condemn one another. We help one another. Those who are willing, we help them. Whereas I am still on a journey. You are on a journey. So if I'm thinking because I'm, you know, I'm slightly ahead of you, I'm lording it over you, I have the problem with God. Okay? Maybe some pride. No, freely I've received, freely I give. Letting fires, life, letting life's problems eclipse God's will and purpose for your life. No. Letting temporary things derail you from eternal and permanent blessings. No. Worries never help. Riches, they come and go. Pleasures, you enjoy them, but they don't cross over. The things people leave behind. If I ask you now, the easy answer is all. They leave all behind. Everything behind. So, we keep our eyes on Jesus. We have the eternal perspective. And we hold on to him. And like I said, this group people who have been Christians for ages, they refuse to move. It's like stopping your car in the middle of the M25 in the United Kingdom. People, if you, if you don't hit you from behind, you're not meant to stop. There are designated places you can go and stop. You don't just stop your car in the middle. The, the, the speed, your left and right, in fact, if you survive it, then, uh, you know, you know that... Uh, you know, you have to go for checkup, you know, of your brain because it's very, very highly dangerous. It's not recommended. God has called us. Jesus is the example we should follow. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Apostle Paul says we should examine ourselves. He that thinks he stands should take heed. Okay, another place he said, I myself, I put my body under subjection so that after preaching to others, I won't be a castaway. Subjection to who? To God. Check me, Lord. Check me, Lord. Instead of, you know, just passing a few hurdles and beginning to boast and tease others. No. Now, the final group, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart. That's a righteous heart. Who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, they bear a crop. So I think I want my heart to be in this group. Do you want your heart to be in this group? Good. I want mine to be in this group. But those get the four things. They hear the word like others. They retain the word. They persevere, mm-hmm. and then they will bear the fruit. You see, the, 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 when you don't retain something, I've used this illustration before, if your battery doesn't retain the charge, it's going to work, you know, I have to change uh, one of the iPads. You charge it 100%. You use it for a few minutes, you see that it's discharged, it has discharged. It's not right. It's not retaining the charge. It's not on. But this group here retain, persevere, and they bear fruit. Ask yourself this question, brothers and sisters and friends. Is the word of God producing fruit in your life? Or in my life, I hear the word of God. Do I retain it? Do I persevere? Am I producing fruit? Let's go into examples of some people whose lives can be described as good soil. Where do I start? 
after the experience of the, the, the after the road to the Damascus experience, an apostle Paul uh, was transformed, called Jesus. He was saved. His life never went backwards. Let us see what he said. One, you know, you know, you know the story. He continued, but I want to draw some light about what happened in Acts, Acts chapter 16. One day, Paul, he wasn't going alone. He was going to a prayer meeting with Silas. And then on their way, they had a, they, they had, the girl followed them and was saying, listen to these people. They are coming to tell you about the way to be saved. That was perfectly okay. Not so. The, the, the guy was saying something good. But in Paul's spirit, he knew that the spirit in that girl was bad. After some time, he said, in the name of Jesus, get out of her. The evil spirit left the girl. Those that were making money and using the girl's uh, evil power to make money, to predict the future, took Paul and Silas. They beat them up. They got them to be flogged severely. When you, are, when you are handed over to the Romans to be flogged, what you expect, minimally, they use this, uh, their, their, their whips have about uh, three, two or three threads, long threads with uh, bone, bone chips put intermittently. And in the very end, they, there's uh, a metal so that when they hit, strike you on and they pull it, you have uh, flesh will come out. So when those same people, you know, the Jews will, will stop at 39 lashes, which is bad enough. They don't want to go into 40. So say, when you hit 40, I think you are against the law. It's about 39. But the Romans will hit you until you are almost gone. But they said, they flogged them severely. And then they handed them over to the prison guard. You know the story. Kept them locked up, chained them, their feet and hands. But Paul and Silas, they set out to go to a prayer meeting. They continued the prayer meeting there. They were just interrupted. Is that perseverance? Yes. They were praying and praising God. They, come, they set out. They just set out for that. So what happened? God sent an earthquake, designed earthquake, that removed the chains of not only Apostle Paul and Silas, but the other guys and the other prisoners. The jailer, the person in charge, was going to kill himself. He knew it was a bad cause, lost cause, because these two prized prisoners were already free and with others. Apostle Paul said, don't kill yourself. We're all here. The jailer said, what must I do to be saved? They heard the same gospel that you and I are hearing. Apostle Paul and Silas said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your house. He used other words to explain to them and they were baptized that night. Look at the response of God. Paul and Silas, they heard, they retained, they persevered, they were fruitful. Just that encounter. Ah, oh, brother, we haven't seen you for some time. Well, they locked us off, but, you know, the jailer and the household gave their lives to Christ. I baptized them as well. You don't need to go back there. Awesome. They were fruitful. This same as of Apostle Paul. See what he writes in to the Roman church. He wrote, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, we are considered, as, you, as, as it is written, for your, for your sake, we face death all day long. 
we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. He continued, I'm persuaded that neither life nor death, height nor depth, angels, demons can separate us. This man heard, retained, persevered. He it it, it, it covered everything, and he was fruitful. And what he wrote to the Roman church. What about the Philippian church? Philippians 1.21 says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Don't even try me, right? For me to live, if I'm alive, is Christ. And if you hear that I'm dead, is gain. Bearing fruit. To the Galatian church, he wrote, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in, in the Son of Man who loved me and gave himself to me. Look at this man writing to the Romans, the, to the people in Philippa, to the, the Galatians. He didn't even stop there. To the Corinthians. I put myself under subjection. You will have said, Paul, you are doing so well. He said, I'm not finished yet. I put myself under subjection. Do you put yourself under subjection? That means you remember, you check it with the word of God. Oh, Lord, help me. There was a time also in the book of Action, Acts chapter 17. In Athens, he stood up among the Areopagus and said, in him we live and move and have our being. All complete. In him we live. If we move, it's in him. Our being is in him. Praise the Lord. There are some other examples. Example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which you can read in Daniel 3. 17 to 18, these three men, somehow there was this king, another king, Nebuchadnezzar. He built this big uh, image, 90 feet tall, 90 feet wide. He put it in Dura, a plain, and said when they hear the music, they should bow, you know, they should bow down to it. And then there was furnace. Uh, he said, uh, who, if you don't do it, we we'll throw you in there. Uh, there was, the furnace, furnace was bad enough. But there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who knew the word. Don't bow, don't worship any other god. So they did not bow. They took them to the king. And the king said, are you ready to do it now? He said, we are not going to argue with you about this matter. The God we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace and for your hands. Even if he does not, if he thinks we are going home from here, we are not going to bow to your gods. Well, they were thrown into the furnace. The people who threw, the fact, they gave the order make it hotter, more. We heard people say more, fire, more fire. They, they threw them, the people that threw them in died. It was so hot. They threw them in. The Lord said it's not time. They threw three people in, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king saw four. The Lord was with them. Their clothes were not burnt. They were alive. They were walking around. It threw you into a furnace. You are turning into a picnic. Are you having a, this get together and just chatting away? The king said, there are four there. Then he called out to them to come. And typically, what did he say? What did he do? He said, 
Everybody, if you if you come if you say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you'll be cut into pieces, and your house will be turned into rubble. We bulldoze your house. But he himself did not believe. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego heard. They retained. They persevered. And they bore fruit. How do I know they bore fruit? They were promoted. And the other people that witnessed it said, whoa, those people, they are also more, they are special people. The power around them, I saw it with my eyes. Can you imagine people, the, the crowd that gathered, what they would go and tell people? I saw something today. Some people, they would tell, they would say, no, it's not possible. They are always skeptics. So no, I saw the three men being thrown in. Then we saw four. We threw three in, we saw four. People don't come out from fire. But this, there was a fourth one. Brothers and sisters, that is where we are called to be. To hear, retain, Persevere. The Lord knows there are problems. Persevere in the truth. You know the story of Joseph. Joseph, we know the story, was taken by his brothers, sold. They almost killed him, then they sold him. And then he ended up in Potiphar's house. The Bible records that day after day, Potiphar's wife wanted to seduce Joseph. Joseph said something. He said, how could I do such a thing and sin against God? He refused. Day after day, check your Bible. It was like a daily thing. She had no job anymore. Just daily. You know, I don't know how many times a day. But this guy, how can I sin against God? He wasn't thinking, how can I sin against this, my master? No, against God. He knew God. He retained God. He persevered. He bore fruit. Joseph was on the way to the palace. Even he himself did not know. But God knew that sin will have derailed him because God doesn't do sin. He doesn't do evil. He's pure. He's holy. He's the father of lights. He was thrown into jail because who would believe a slave over the, the, the woman of the house? He said this was attempted rape. But I didn't do it. He ended up in jail. He continued with God. The Bible says, and God was with him. Brothers and sisters, are you confident of that? It's supposed to be available to all of us. God was with him. Because he was in the light. God cannot, do, he doesn't do darkness. He has power over darkness, but he doesn't go and camp in the darkness. Then, God gave the king a dream which only Joseph could interpret. All the padlocks in the land, they would check them out. No, the only key to the problem was with Joseph. When he interpreted it, I'm jumping many steps, he ended up to be number two. And then, long story, cut it short. When his father died, his brothers that sold him, said, oh, we just want to be your slaves. He said, don't worry. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So that many people will be saved, as you can see. Joseph knew the word, retained the word, persevered, and bore fruit. Nations were saved. Because of Joseph. God in Joseph. Praise the Lord. We know the uh, Anna, Esther, beautiful lady with faith. If I perish, I perish. 
And I will round up this section with, what about Job? God himself said to Satan, this my servant is blameless, upright, fears God, and shuns evil. He makes sure he avoids evil. In fact, added to that, they said, with his custom, when his children had parties, he used to sacrifice after that. He said, Lord, in case they sinned, not that he saw them, in case, please. That was his regular thing. He knew God. He persevered. Yes. He knew God. He retained the knowledge of God. He persevered. He was fruitful. After all the things that happened to Job, the Bible says, God blessed him. He lost three sons, you know, uh, seven sons and three daughters. He got them back. All his wealth, he got more back in the end. He got his health. The Bible says he lived to see his children's children up to the fourth generation. You are wondering what you, you will do in heaven. You go and meet Job. See, those children, were they the same as the ones that died? You know, he lost uh, seven sons and three daughters before. Okay? And now God gave him, after everything, gave him seven sons and three daughters. Were they the same? I don't know the answer. Okay? We can ask Job when you see him, but make sure you get to heaven. Praise the Lord. Good soil. Examples of people for you and I to say, Lord, help us. Finally, how can I be a good soil type of person? How? First, believe in Jesus as Savior and Lord. He is the only one that can take you there. You've seen governments come, governments go. This one we talk, be in opposition. When he gets there, the ones that are ruling will be opposition. You just go on and on. Only Jesus saves completely. He died. He gave, he, you know, his body was broken for us. But we have to believe and receive. It's just like me saying, take. I point something to you, say, take. If you don't get up to take it, you don't have it. Okay? Jesus has died for mankind. But those who believe and repent of their sins, you can't believe and say, I'm a Christian, and you'll be doing evil. It doesn't work. It, nobody has been able to, make, uh, to achieve that. They have to repent. Say, Lord, help me. Forgive me. This, I still have the desire. Remove it. Don't tell me. Tell God. It's when you keep quiet that you own it, that you are in big trouble. Say, God, even this desire, remove it. That is wrong. Stop sinning. God is sin sensitive. He is holy. He does not sin or condone sin. Jesus came to die, to set us free from sin. So the first step is for you to believe and repent. Turn away. That's what repentance. Turn away from it. Second point, read and hide the word of God in your heart. Retain it. Retain it. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, you know, you, you have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. It, the word of God will help you to remember the will of God. What does he say? Should be, what does God say? It should be what you should be asking yourself in various situations. Believe in Jesus. Read and hide the word of God in your heart. Third point, know the importance of the word of God. 
Psalm 119, verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Lord, it's your word that will guide me. And when I want to move forward, it's your word that I will follow. A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. See, as we do that, you are saying, I will walk in line, O Lord, with your will. And the Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, which when we, are, when we ask Jesus to forgive us, he comes to us. And when we ask God to fill us more with the Holy Spirit, he does. But we don't, is the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mix with sin. See, this word sin, sin is the enemy. When you do things contrary to God's will, it is sinful. Things that are shady, things you cheat others, things that are not right before God, they are sinful. Fourth point, Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. It's not what you say quickly. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious ways and see if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. When you, when you, you go through that, which I do every day, every time, it helps you to appraise yourself and to see if you are dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. With Psalm 91. It helps you. Search me, O oh Lord. David first of all started that uh, Psalm 139, said, where can I go from you? If I go to the depths, you are there. If I go up, you are there. If I go anywhere, you are there. You hem me about. Lord, I surrender. That's what he's saying. I surrender to you. But search me, O Lord. Please, just search me. Shine your light. I don't want to go and find out by sinning. No. Search me, O Lord. Test me and see. When you find something, I will surrender. When I was growing up, as a young boy, in the playground, we soon identified the type of people you shouldn't start a fight with. Those that are not afraid to die. Don't go near them. Don't, don't go near them. They're not, they're not going to get tired. Okay? What am I saying? When you come to the Lord, say, Lord, I'm not going anywhere. I hold on to you. I'm not going anywhere. There's no plan B. Lord, I'm not going anywhere. Search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious will and see. You are all seen. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the omnipotent God, omniscient, omnipresent. I submit to, to you. David knew he couldn't hide. How do you hide from God? Fifth point, ask the Lord in prayer to make you fruitful as you obey the commission of the Lord. We all have this commission. Whether you are a pastor, you have, you have to be making disciples. Don't forget the two questions I said we should consider. What group do you belong to? And the person you are influencing, what group do they belong to? Counseling them, helping them, what group? So that you will pray. You will pray for them. The commission of the Lord, go and make disciples. He told these disciples, Okay, even now, listening to me here and anywhere, it is to help us. The job is not here. The job is out there. Go and make disciples. You bring them here, but you are growing anywhere, bringing the word of God, directing them to Jesus. Say, Lord, help this person. Help me. And you'll be an example. You are the Jesus they will see. Even if you work in an, in an all non-Christian environment, are they seeing Jesus in you? 
if they are not seeing Jesus in you, where is the Jesus in you then? What group do you fall into? Are you among thorns? Are you on the rock without moisture, without soil? Or are you along the wayside? You just hear the word of God, you, you can quote it. There's nothing that says if you quote it, you'll get into heaven. Just leave it. Just leave it. Just grow. Finally, find a church where worshiping and obeying God, that is the word of God, is uppermost. You have a role to play. Check them out with the scripture. You can read. If someone says, you know, jump from a balcony, say, where is it? Here. If they ask you to come with one eye closed to the church, this Sunday we are going to have one eye closed and come. See, that's not in the Bible. You know why I say that? I'm just choosing random examples. You have a role to play. The Bereans were, the, anything Paul said, the Bible says they were noble people because they went to check to see if these things were so. Are you checking? Let me just take a sample here. How many people have Bibles in their homes or in their phones? Everybody. You have more than one. We're all indicted now because on your phone you have different, all the versions. And they give you free. If it's your version, it's all free. You cannot say you do not know. Do you read? Yes. Check them out. Because this is a pit stop. You are the real deal. You are the better uh, one if Christ is in you. You now go out and tell others. You now help them. You now make, pray for them. You now lead them with all these things so that they will be in the good soil. Their hearts will be transformed. They will hear the, the word of God, which is the same. They will retain. Retention is key. They will persevere. Nothing will shake them. And then they will bear fruit, much fruit. In the next few days, we are going to go into dedication, we're dedicating our lives to God. That was we pray in the prayer and fasting. Lord, search me. You do it, an opportunity for us to stop. We we'll do it twice a year. But stop, Lord, check me out. Ask us, am I being fruitful? Ask brothers and sisters. If you see brother and sister who is fruitful, ask them to, what are you doing? What can I do? Pray for me. It's all free. And if you see someone asking for money, to pray for you is evil. There are many of, it, of them about. That is why we make sure you, you desire, it has to come from your heart. If nothing is coming from your heart, don't do it. That, that's where you are. Don't let, don't let people talk you. Say, oh, bring money for a seed. This, people just change that Bible passage. They just go, seed, sow the seed. The seed here is the word of God. Okay? It's the word of God. If you want to give, give. The Bible says if you are generous, people will give to you. And I know very many generous Christians. I'm looking at some of them here. Also, God will bless you. But this is not a whole message. That whole movement is as if part, half of the sermon every Sunday a sowing seed. What seed are you sowing in a dry place? They are not, not, you don't even have soil in church. You are sowing seed. They turn it this way, turn it that way. No, it's about Jesus. Disciples will give. But sowing seed, this seed is the word of God that is made, that Jesus himself is in. So it's not something we should trivialize and say it's money. So this, I hope. no, the word of God. Let us stand up and pray.
Uh, Father and our God, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. We are grateful. We are learning from you. Thank you, Lord, because you were revealed so that sin will be broken, so that will be good soil. We pray, Lord, that your word that we hear, we've heard and will continue to hear, Lord, that we will retain your word, we will persevere, and we will bear fruit to your glory. Lord, we pray that nothing, Lord, will stop us from being the good soil, good soil that will open our hearts to you always and will ask you to search us. Oh, Lord, help us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the giver of life, the Savior, the Redeemer, the one that has promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. Help us, Lord, not to leave you, even as you have promised never to leave us. Anything that displeases you in our lives, Please forgive and remove. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.